It's the African Style Festival. I mean, so what better day, time? We have the sunshine like we're in Africa. Um, we have loads of African men kind of killing it. Dandies to me have always been the guys or that guy who has worn what he wanted when he wanted in his own personal style, regardless of trends, regardless of you know what was happening at that you know that moment. I'm, I'm very much in love with um, the sartorial look and, and the style of a gentleman. I mean, you can see people are making an effort to be more sartorial now. Everyone is trying to like wear a bit more of a jacket, more of a suit. We're talking strictly about fashion. Been an intrinsic part of who I am since I can remember. You're talking about Afro-Caribbeans coming from the boat, appropriating a British style, fused with an African style. It's a history of music. You're talking about diaspora, which is a history of the world. When you dress, when you take pride in your appearance, it's, it's a mark of respect for other people. Whether I'm a dandy, an urban dandy, a black dandy, I let others decide that me, I dress for me and trying to have fun with it. I like to mix it up, you know, um, break some of the rules while respecting some others. I'm somebody who's passionate about what I wear. Um, I believe that my body is, is like a, a piece of canvas and what I wear is, is my paintbrush, you know, and I can paint whatever picture I want every day. It's a chance to express myself to the world about who I am and how I want to be treated and how I want to be perceived. I'm Caribbean, I'm African, I'm English, and you see all that within me, hopefully. You know, I like to show a bit of class, elegance, as well as edginess in the way that I dress. I think that dandyism is something that should be celebrated, you know, within, uh, within our culture a bit more. And, and it's nice, it's nice to actually wear something that you feel good wearing and, you know, show out a little bit, be a bit flamboyant with it. I like to be the one that writes the book, you not know, reads the book. So I'd rather create like, you know, the actual template for it. And then, yeah, it became making my own hat, making my suits fit me the way I want to do it, and then create the little brim. And... My style is, it's me. It's, it's an amalgamation of so many different influences. The 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, even some medieval times. Don't always try to fit in. You shouldn't always conform to what society tells you is fashion or is style. Being unique, being comfortable in your own skin. Don't try and fit in, you're born to stand out. I find it absolutely fascinating, purely because of its reformulation of the concept of what it is to be black in an urban environment, effectively. Because it is, what it does is to debunk the stereotypical um, perspective of the, or, or the view that's often um, um, regurgitated time and time and again in our society. And for that reason, I find it a very interesting project. It's quite an important piece of archive, I guess. A piece of history that needs to be sort of recorded or documented. And so to be part of that is kind of an honour. I think it's important that we speak with our own voices um, and we're given a platform to, to share that. So for me, I think this project really is important. It feels very revolutionary, even though it's actually something which has always been there. Uh, we live in a multicultural society of London, for example, and there's people who take, men who take pride in their, their clothing, and as well are amalgamating all the different styles that cross um, many, many different territories and heritage as well. It struck a chord with me because it, you know, it's everything that I think is a part of me for sure. This is also bringing in the traditional values of, of black masculinity, but also there's a lot of street style and there's a little bit of hip hop in there as well. And I think that mix is, is, is so evocative and so unique. 
I think it celebrates a part of African culture that isn't really highlighted in the media nowadays. My parents came over in the 1960s and when they were asked to come over to work, there was a real sense of pride. Fashion for me is, you know, I'm African as well. So living in Africa for 11 years, seeing the fashion over there, influences that has come from my father, my uncles. Seeing my dad standing in front of a shop with his hat to the side, looking really just proud of being where he was. And I, can't, I don't know what that is, but I could really feel it from you that his clothing presented it, his manners in presented it. And there's something very, very powerful in the community when somebody dresses up and dresses with colour. You know, Shaft in Africa played a major role. The whole kind of black exploitation, music that came out in the 60s. I can say my influence would be more from like the rude boy scene, going back from like the 50s, the 40s, ska, rock steady. So if you want to bring it a bit more British, you had the mod style with their, when they used to ride the scooter bikes. They weren't riding the motorbikes, it was the scooters. There was just something a little bit more dandy about it. Um, I met Sarah when I was working as a tailor on Savo Road and she wanted to take a few pictures and told me about the project she was working on. I thought it was a great idea and I saw her photos as well and they were I mean, amazing. I like the colours, the setting is like, I mean, more, like very natural. It's not just about uh, the facade, you know, she feels the subjects, the subjects are fully integrated into what she does. What really interested me about her work is that she gets under the skin of communities and people and I found that interesting and kind of trusted her approach. For one to have pride in their own appearance and to use clothes as a fashion sign to exude your, your mood and your, the spirit of the times, I think it's something that's fantastic and ought to be encouraged. You know, this is us here now. <laughs>